Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to season two of the Nakabi Diaries podcast, a platform dedicated to sharing the stories of the women behind the veil. This season, we will be speaking to more Muslim women from all walks of life as we continue to discuss their deep and intimate reasons for wearing the niqab, the niqabi diaries, our experiences, our perspectives, our voices. I'm your host, Samar, and thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sister. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, habibiti. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I'm very well. Jazakallah khair for joining us today on the Naqabi Diaries. Sister, could you please introduce yourself for the listeners and tell us a little bit about what you do, inshallah? Okay, my name is Lina Um Ayaz. Um, I'm a revert uh, from Lithuania. Mashallah. Um, I'm a mother of uh, two beautiful children and... Uh, a third teenager, if you consider husband as a child. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I'm a home staying mom. Alhamdulillah, looking after children and, you know, just general household duties. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, mashallah. The, the best job in the world, I think. And, and very hard as well, actually. SubhanAllah. Oh, yes. We don't have enough credit as a mother. Definitely not. Definitely not. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Um, so, sister, could you, um, if if you don't mind, share with us a little bit of your journey to Islam, how you became a Muslim? Um, my journey was, uh, um, I know that few people take um, a starting in, to know Islam through the books and the knowledge. My journey was very personal through the, I was seeing the people's behaviours, mm-hmm. uh, how Muslims behave, and that really attracted me. Mm-hmm. The kindness of Muslims, the, um, the charities, the understanding, non-judgmental uh, uh, views of, uh, of Muslims, it really attracted me. And then obviously, slowly, slowly, I got to the point where I started uh, asking questions. And 2009, when I got married to my husband in Pakistan, I did took my shahada. But that shahada was more of um, renouncing the old beliefs. The Trinity, mm-hmm. I was a Christian, so renouncing the Trinity. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't as so much as, uh, I would say, jumping full head into Islam. Um, my husband was very kind to me with uh, his patience. So he said, you know, take your time. Uh, whatever, you know, if you have questions, I'm here for you, anyone else. He's never pushed me to do anything or, you know, rush into anything. Alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. and. Um, it took me a few years, I must say, I think, because right after we got married, we had a baby and I had a postnatal depression. So that took away um, my studies, took me away from Islam. Mm-hmm. And uh, 2000, I think, 14 or 15, I reconnected with Islam. I found the beautiful friends, Muslims who were just uh, my friends were just there for me. Okay. Uh, same time giving da'wah. And yes, I reconnected with Islam. And from then on, one weekend i just felt like this is it like it's time and it happened alhamdulillah put hijab on learn how to pray um learn to uh, start reading quran and hadith and different other books and yeah from then on alhamdulillah on one oh, and upwards subhanallah alhamdulillah it's amazing what a beautiful journey and i think for me one of the most beautiful things is that is the way you came to islam is the characters of the muslim and their behavior towards you that what drew you to islam i think as muslims we often underestimate um the power of our behavior and the this is part of our religion we're supposed to have good manners the prophet said that he came to perfect Mm -hmm. the good manners and a lot of time in the name of being practicing sometimes you know, some of us, we forget the manners that goes along with the actual practicing, because really we're not practicing Islam properly if we don't have good manners. And I think some of us Absolutely. sometimes forget that. SubhanAllah. That's just amazing. You know, one of the story uh, I can uh, I can add quick stories. Um, I used to work in, um, in a restaurant and had to come back very late uh, nights in the evening at home. Um, just wait that was years before I met my husband and mm-hmm. every, I was to live in East London and when I was coming back home being a European I get a lot of car beeps and call name callings and mm-hmm. darling and all those you know Jahiliya names and um, one time uh, I just put hijab on it's, um, oh. it was had nothing to do with Islam it's just I saw a Muslim lady sort of not being addressed 
So with, in a way that I was addressed on the road. And uh, I was coming from work and uh, these are two, now I know brothers, were walking. The minute they saw me, what I was expected to, uh, any sort of comments, um, they put their eyes down and carried on walking. And I was like, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. like this is it. This is respect. This is like, you no. Know, so I f- it, that was, yeah, that was one of the beginnings of, you know, one of the stories that I, I f- came across in the people's behavior. And I was like, this is it. The Islam means respect. Mm, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, no. That's amazing. That's amazing. Really. And I th- yeah, it definitely. I think these are the things that, I mean, even for me, my journey, when I became a Muslim, I think that for, for many years, like I, I felt so close to Muslims because of these same characteristics that, you know, that you're talking about how they yes. treated me, always welcoming. And, you know, you always feel like you're part of the family, like immediately uh, if you go mm-hmm. to visit their homes, family. you know. And I didn't experience that anywhere else. Like, I remember one of the things that I really loved about going to Muslim's house is, is the food, because you'd never leave hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it is the food, yes. like you, You'd never leave hungry, whereas other friends, like if you go to their house, you'll be lucky if you even get offered like water or a drink sometimes, you know? Yes. It's, it's, like, it's almost like you have to beg for food if you're hungry. But when you go to Muslim's house, there's no such thing. <laughs> the food just comes. You know, I was, um, when I started in 2014, when I really joined uh, Islam not that I rejoined but uh, I kind of opened up again uh, mm-hmm. one of my friends had me to the revert sisters whatsapp group so I was just talking in there and you know listening to what other sisters saying and there was one sister her name is Shabana mm-hmm. and just we just clicked we started talking separately and um, she asked me for my address I said I want to send you something and that was so subhanallah so strange for me how come I will give up my address to a complete stranger. Like, who does that, really? But I just said, you know what? I'm a Muslim now. Let me just trust Allah. And I gave her my address. The next thing, she sent me a beautiful handwritten note with the books to me and my children and the presents. And and I was amazed. Wallahi, like, how come that the complete stranger, she never, she doesn't know me. We never met. I didn't give her anything for her to be so kind to me. And then her her explaining that it's all for the sake of Allah was, um, it was the more, I think one of the biggest keys, you know, on a few keys that opened my heart even further. I was like, this is it, you know. And now till now she's my she's my best friend, and 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 it's just amazing how European people or Western Europe do not get to see that. Uh, fortunately, the beauty of Islam, the beauty of the characters. Alhamdulillah, it's something that just unites people, and that's what is so beautiful, Masala. It doesn't matter yeah. where you're from, you know. I where you're that, from, how you are, yes. It's yeah, just definitely. Amazing. It's not about color, it's not about your country or your language, anything. It's just about. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. I was once in a masjid, and um, about myself, my very first few masjids, I was shy to go with anyone, so I would go by myself. And there was this beautiful Somali lady, so we started praying uh, the first two uh, rakahs for the masjid. And we prayed, and I stepped back, and I was like, she's from Somalia, I'm from Europe, yet I understood exactly what she said in a prayer. How amazing is that? Yeah, oh, Fatima, cool. I understood what she's saying. We don't have to need, we don't need to have a common language. Mm-hmm. How beautiful is that? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. So, sister, could you, like, go into de- more detail now and tell us how did you come about wearing the niqab? Okay, yeah, the niqab, I must say, I've met a lot of sisters uh, who were wearing niqab, and it was not something that I was into. I was saying, okay, you know what, this is, uh, needs uh, much deeper in knowledge, uh, higher iman, um, but I think it's going to be very uh, simple way, it's corona, I think. Um, when sure. I we all had to start wearing the masks, I said, why masks, you know what? Well, we have a dean, we have a beautiful dean, which tells us to cover our face. And uh, yeah, I tried it. And I think that was the beginning of, of wearing niqab. And, and from then on, I said, yeah, this is me right now. I'm not sure, you know, how long it's going to be. I was never wanted to force myself upon anything mm-hmm. as long as I feel good with it. So I think, yeah, it was the corona, the beginning of all the pandemic that made me wear niqab. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. So, um, I t- did you find it an easy, easy thing to do? No, then? subhanallah, no. <laughs> well, I, when the first times I wore niqab, I was like praising every single 
sister. I was like, subhanAllah, how do they do? I can't breathe. I couldn't breathe. I had to walk and then lift up a little bit of the cab just to get the oxygen. Mm. Oh, it was not easy, subhanAllah. I think, uh, but then I could see that I'm getting better and better every day. Mm-hmm. So I understood this is something I think you have to get used to of it. Uh, that was like from personal point of view. And um, yeah, now alhamdulillah, I can't go without it. I think masks even like worse for me than the cab. Yeah, I think so as well. To, yeah, yeah, masks are worse than the cab. But yeah, first I was like, how do, and you know, the eyes, it keeps on going into the eyes and how do you eat? And I was like, it was it was a ch- personal challenge and mm-hmm. I took it with the laughter. I took it with a lot of praises to the sisters who do uh, every day that. But yeah, it was it was a challenge, <laughs> a personal challenge. Alhamdulillah. I, I remember the first time I put the niqab on, that was the same thing for me. Literally, I couldn't breathe. The, the fabric <laughs> was the fabric was really bad. I don't, I blame it on the fabric. And it, no, I think, um, alhamdulillah, there's there's so many range of fabric um, niqabs now. So if you... That's the thing, yeah. When you get into one, it, you know it, yeah. yeah. So that's that's the trick, really, because the first one, I remember literally just suffocating. And I really wanted <laughs> to wear the niqab so badly that I just kept wearing it like for maybe like a week or two. And I just couldn't breathe, but I kept Subhanallah, yes. Yeah, subhanallah. Um, oh, alhamdulillah, yeah. yes. Yeah, like you said, yeah, I started researching as well, uh, different types of niqab, different styles, mm-hmm. um, different material, you know, and yeah, it, it, it helps a lot, absolutely, yeah. But yeah, the first one was <laughs> suffocation. So did you, did you did you have you found any obstacles from anybody because of wearing the niqab or did you think because obviously you wore it at the time of COVID that just kind of made it normal? Just... No, you know, sister, I actually looked at it a little bit differently. I um coming um from the obviously uh Europe, mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to connect niqab on a two level, on a from a non-Islamic point of view and Islamic point of view. I did not. Um, I knew if I'm going into, let's say, if I travel to the area where it's more dominant uh, Muslim sisters or brothers, mm-hmm. I would probably would wear my favorite black niqab and, you know, I would uh, feel more free. But if I would go into area where it's uh, non-Muslim dominant, then I would wear maybe more colorful clothing, mm-hmm. more, uh, white niqabs, um, sort of uh, to, because I understand, I understand from being the, on the other side, how sometimes it can, it, it's a thing, lack of knowledge. It's a yeah, lack of knowledge and understanding. And we have to remember that Allah hasn't guided them to sort of to understand. And it does look on one hand, a little bit strange when summertime mm. um, to a non-Muslim, when summertime the lady, and we don't believe that she chooses herself. Of course. We're all black, mm. black niqab, the face, the covering, the everything. And surely we think you can't breathe. Mm-hmm. so i think i was trying to um uh, i've never had this per se uh, anyone say anything i did get looks i think which is everyone does but um and i tried to the, but the hardest thing for me was when i walk through and i i see people and i smile and i want to give that which is i'm, I'm happy to smile to anyone mm-hmm. and i smile and then i forget wait well you don't see me smiling <laughs> Well, they can see your eyes smiling. I think I, yeah, I, I find I think, that people usually respond to my smiles. But I think, you know, if people see more often the Kabis, then I think they can realize the difference. Yeah. But when you go and see people who don't hardly ever see the Kabis, I don't think they really pay attention that much to the eyes. So when I try to smile and they're not smiling back, I'm like, oh, so you didn't see me. Okay, hold on. <laughs> so no I was trying to I think I was always aware of the the difference and mm. I was trying to sort of uh, be maybe more kinder mm. if mm. I'm around people who uh, I think wouldn't understand yeah. but you get like shock shock eyes and you know and and people looks and whispers but no alhamdulillah I've never had anything uh directly say to me or no that's that was never an issue alhamdulillah alhamdulillah so i will ask you that do you think that that is partly because do do you think that people can identify you as being european with an aqab or do you think that they can't tell if you're european or not because sometimes when um reva sisters who are european of european origin white sisters sometimes they they've said to me like when they start wearing the aqab it's easier for them because 
people it's harder for people to tell like if they're like you know white or do you know what i mean no yeah and i know exactly what you mean um obviously um i can't tell uh from the other point of view i can only um i believe my personal belief that muslims mm-hmm. um sisters or and brothers should integrate more with non-muslims definitely yeah because uh yes obviously there's always going to be an issue of race mm-hmm. i mean there is always there um but however i've i've met a lot of uh i must say i've met a lot of sisters who especially niqabis if they put niqab they completely remove themselves from a western society mm. and i think you know i i a niqab or no niqab or hijab or niqabi i i tried to talk i tried to still integrate i think it's the lack of is lack of because a non muslims almost scared of us when i tried to speak to the, uh, a non muslim they like oh is it okay is it well, well, how is it and and you see them they want to know i mean yeah, that's maybe maybe it just i've never kind of felt a bad version of it i believe a lot of sisters had uh, and brothers had uh, uh, worse experiences and uh, of course there's a really bad side of it but i from my experience they just scared they they have a lot of they want they interested they want to know how so how do you do it like when before ramadan i was asked so um how are you going to eat it with the, you know with the niqab i said well sorry darling but at home i don't wear niqab <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's it's you again to ask such a questions that you think well what do you think of us you know and it's just you can see that they interested yet they have zero knowledge and you know and and like um there was a lady um she was so angry at me first why are you wearing this you know and and we was in shopping mall and why are you wearing this cloth on your face and you know and she was trying to pick a fight bless her hugged her and we start talking and i say to her darling look if you remove every man from shopping center i promise you are more than happy to remove this cloth <laughs> mashallah no it's not you darling and i picked up my in the car and i showed her my face i said look you know it's, it's just a man i mean can you we not remove them and just make them go so she started laughing and in the end she said oh look she's been um with the guy who was a muslim and he was not nice to her so yeah. she has this little bit of so i think it's the knowledge i think is and, and our sisters need to be like sort of i think more open to other sisters to ladies mm-hmm. i think that it needs to be more integration into both societies we need yeah. to mix up more no, i think i think you're right it makes a lot of sense because it's, it's it comes down to these finer detail things and when people yes. have been kind of um almost just maybe i don't know like brainwashed or um i don't like to yes. really use that term but you know like they've been given these kind of stereotypes or perceptions that you know we we're, we're completely like like the clothes that we're wearing we're wearing it because we want to be completely cut yes. off from the society but it's just not the case and i found that when you when i like i know a lot of sisters here who were going to call for example and we have we have friends who are non muslims and you know we yes. we have normal relationships with them and, and you know me coming from when you're a reva especially um and you have um non muslim family and they they're used to you dressing like that when you go outside they know that you don't dress like that at home you know they know that you can still eat they know that you, <laughs> yeah that's what so i'm you saying do that everything, was a... you do everything that everybody else does in a normal way you know it's just a piece of cloth you know it's just your your outside i just i try to explain to people and it's just a way. man right it's, yeah it's, it's just, just i don't want to be open yeah i say to them i say to them my niqab and my you know jilbab my hijab it's like it's like wearing a coat for me Yes. So you're going outside, you wear a coat and I'm never going to go outside without my coat, okay? That's the only difference. Like obviously you don't always wear a coat outside, but this is how a Muslim woman's hijab is for her. You it's yes. like you you always going to just put that on. Whatever you're wearing, you can be wearing anything when you're in the house, when you go outside, you put this coat over the over yourself and that's that's how you go outside and do your daily business before you come back home. So it's just like that. So we usually want to explain it to them like that. They understand it. so they know it's something that we don't we're not having a shower <laughs> with on their cobs on <laughs> yeah. you know like. no that's yeah but you know but obviously talking from islamic point of view is is the freedom isn't it is absolute entire freedom when you wear niqab 
you walk, I feel free. I've never felt as free as when I wore the cup. Something. And I've never thought of having such feeling. I never attributed the freedom to niqab. But unless you try it yourself, it's like, wow, you know, you, you, you this all, how you're supposed to look, all the stereotypes of, of Western society, of the clothing and, and makeups and just name it. Mm. It's a freedom. It's such a freedom. The respect from brothers you get, the respect from sisters. I mean, even the respect from non-Muslims. I don't think mm-hmm. they're very, you know, then... Even my husband, I must say, when we used to, uh, when I had friends who are Nikabis, and I would see them, uh, and he's a Muslim, right? Mm-hmm. So he, we would see them in the high street, and I would just salam them. And he, one time, he walked away, and he said, "But how do you know that's the sister?" I said, "Well, you do know." He said, "But you," and he is a Muslim. He mm-hmm. comes from Islamic country, and I said, "No, you do know. Is the is the eyes? Is the the way she walks? Is her clothing? Is." Uh, and now that I wear niqab, he's like, okay, I get it. The thing is, your eye has to get used to the actual, like you say, the, the code. And, yeah. and then you just, it's the same thing. I mean, this, yeah, it takes a knowledge and, and the will to understand. Alhamdulillah. No, definitely, I think it's important. It's just, um, I think it's important to normalize it, basically, because it's not something to be afraid of as, as we said it's like you know it's just an item of clothing yes it means that we're muslim and it means that we're trying to follow islam but this isn't something it's itself to be afraid of if we're, if we're putting into practice the manners that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa taught us and trying yes. to you know be kind to people and be respectful then inshallah people shouldn't be afraid of it but sister don't you think in today's dna right when it says so much information internet is available to majority of the people in the world i think if you have a personality when you want to pick on something Mm -hmm. you're always going to have to find a pick on skin color race religion uh, uh, anything you will always going to find something to pick on but you have a personality that you just live your own life you you know you you happy with your own um self and then no matter who you are or how you dressed, uh, it never should be an issue. Of course, of course. And but this is the thing, and I totally agree with you. And I think that this is this is this is like there's two types of people in the world, like you mentioned. Yeah. So it depends on what type of person you are, and and it means that when we face those people who want to look for reasons to divide, yes, have to do that extra work, basically. Yes to show them that actually we're not we're not actually so different as you think you know so yes. that having that kind of connection of you know on a human level to make them see I mean I remember there was a time I was at the bus stop and there was a lady um I think she was well, I think it was, well, she's an English lady but she said she was Catholic and she basically asked me oh why why do you have to cover your face like that and I just said well well you know it's part of my religion and you know I like to do this as my religious practice to feel close to God and I said you know even in um and then she said she was Catholic and you know she remembers that when she was growing up the nuns used to always cover their heads and stuff and I said well do you know the Catholic nuns they even used to cover their faces at one point yes you know? and that's something that you know they stopped doing so people it's amazing how over time people's cultures change bit by bit and they kind of forget easily where they came from before and that's something that was something that was normal for them at those times and um you know now what's normal for them wouldn't have been normal for people before but it's you know people haven't really changed that much it's just maybe what you're used to seeing has changed you know but the the people themselves we're still the same people so clothing is- I think you know in the clothing is uh, it's I think it's a uh, it's a human it's a human nature I uh, just to give a quick uh, example I come from uh, Lithuania where my mom had a severe disability uh, Allah um, mm-hmm. um, she lost all her hair so she mm-hmm. had to wear a wig and you know what it's got nothing to do with religion right mm-hmm. but in a country where people were not used to a disability where disability is taboo the she gets to get looks and comments and so i think it's a human's nature when we don't know things when we're scared of things mm-hmm. we're bound to um go against it or be uh, majority of the people are unfortunately do it in the wrong way but it, i think it's the same goes with everything no matter how you look why people get upset with the Sikh people or with the Muslim people or with the Hindus. Mm. I mean, the end of the day, we're all going to answer to our creator, ourselves. 
So if we just uh, st st start to talk about individuals as per se, um, you know, what makes you, you, and remind that we all have our own lives, then we're not gonna sort of focus on uh, much on the, what other person does or mm -hmm. how he or she dressed or how what he or she does. Exactly, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. So, because uh, niqab or no niqab is, I think it's it's very much, it's still the issue goes down to basics. Definitely. How people react. And it's, it's common respect, you know, if we have that just common respect for people, even people who we don't understand what they're doing or why they yes. do certain things this this is this this makes everything easier because it's an it's, it helps to break down the barriers as well because if you just gonna Absolutely. you just judge people then obviously there's people who for example they might approach you negatively and you might be somebody who takes that in a good way and uses up as an opportunity to actually talk to the person but then there's others who won't take that in a good way and they'll just like you know maybe retaliate or they'll yeah, be offended the or yes to yeah to face the abuse widen the gap so you know this is this is this is how it is like everybody like should just try to have respect for for others you know regardless of the differences you know and get to know people just like you know don't and judge, like you say, stereotypes the media yeah. and everything whatever the my own dad miskeen uh, you know he comes to me and he says um you know also oh, you follow religion because of your husband you know i understand you have to follow your husband but you know maybe not so much and he's trying in a sweet way to sort of you know he's scared and I, when i say to him i got up i'm not upset but i was like, daddy i said you know that i was about to divorce my husband because he was not you know very religious mm, subhanallah. so he's with me or without me i say this is so i think again yes education and people fear of a lot of things alhamdulillah yeah, subhanallah. alhamdulillah alhamdulillah so sister when you started to wear the hijab um did you find that you had any kind of abuse or anything like that because this is something i uh, like i hear from some like reva sisters who as i said from european background because uh, one of the thing in the muslim community i've realized is that um when you're a white reva or when you're when you say the word reva in general people automatically assume that you're white okay so like because i don't know like if other yes when like being black basically people never think that i'm a reaver when they meet me okay um, <laughs> because it's like people seem to think that reaver like a muslim it has a color do you know what i mean you're brown you're black you, do you know what i mean so um, you know when you say that when i was just starting to learn about islam mm -hmm. i never thought that i can be a muslim and when i say when i was asked why i said well because i'm white yeah subhanallah yeah, so it was really Allah forgive me, but the, yeah, I always thought that you have to have some sort of, you know, background, even forefathers should be somewhere brown or black or white, yeah. you know, that to be a Muslim, but Alhamdulillah, for, yeah, it's a lack of knowledge again. Yeah, it's, 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 they, people do attach Islam to a particular colour, and I find that, yes. to be honest, it's, it's strange in a way, but I think, um, like, because at the end of the day, when you look in, for example, Russia, and there's like the, the, and the other smaller countries around Russia, like Dagestan, etc. there's, these are like, there's a lot of Muslims, like absolutely yes. they're, they're white and you know Khabib Nurmagomedov the um you yeah he's white and nobody <laughs> and everybody knows that he's Muslim but nobody and, and people know that he's not a reaver but I don't think people are connected to the dots he's not just he's not the only white um Muslim who isn't a reaver there's loads of them you know so well um, you know still, say, um it, as look I've been a Muslim alhamdulillah of, of some years now I do consider myself having some knowledge and a few a few months ago, I was in the hospital, mm -hmm. and the nurse, a female, uh, sorry, male nurse, was talking to myself and husband about uh, um, the things we need to discuss. And in the end, uh, the doctor came and laid the doctor. So I shook her hand, sort of saying, "Oh, thank you very much for your help." And believe me or not, because there was so much important knowledge was going through my mind, I completely forgot I shouldn't be. Sh I, I didn't even think I shouldn't be shaking a man's hand. It was it was quite a disturbing conversation, so that completely flew my mind. But the male nurse was a Chinese guy, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I turned around to him and I sort of gave him my hand, sort of okay, just to say thank you for the help. And he just about touched my hand, and I was thinking, oh, and then he straight away clicked me. I said, okay, yes, I'm a Muslim. He respects me. Thank you so much. And you know, it sort of everything went back into normal. Just as we stepped out, he said, "Oh, you know, I see, uh, see you next time, brother." Inshallah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh, 
he's a brother. MashaAllah. <laughs> And it, it took me by surprise, and I, I, I really felt so ashamed. I, I was ashamed of myself. Uh, why would I not even think of that? That the Chinese brother could be a brother. But that's that's what I'm saying. We don't. We don't yeah. because it, it, even even as reverts. That's what I'm saying. Even as reverts, and it's happened to me before. I've met like white brothers myself and I know that I know that there's white people who are from Muslim backgrounds okay but even like there's been times I've met white brothers and it's like I've heard the Geordie accent and like literally I was perplexed I remember one time my brother said to me salam alaikum and I like I think I could just <laughs> pick my draw my jaw up because like I don't know why it caught me off guard I don't know why but you know I suppose like as well it's not just the being white but when we it's, it's a cultural thing I think because often you know, yeah. when you, become, you know how it is you know you become Muslim yes. you start dressing a particular way you know whether it's hijab for us um, females or even the men maybe they're you know you we're used to seeing Muslims who like people people who become Muslims that we start wearing like Islamic style clothing you know the Arab clothes the yes. thing, all this kind of stuff or having a particular type of beard look you know but we we forget that not every brother can grow one of these big beards you know, so and we forget that the Sunnah beard became a fashion for how many times have I said how many come to the people who are not brothers? Allah. So we, you know, we attach, these, we attach these outward <laughs> things to, to, to Muslims. We do, we do it for our own selves, subhanAllah. But it, yeah, it's, it's fine, yes. subhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, Chinese Muslim, yeah, alhamdulillah. Because I see I quite do. a lot of um, this, this, this it's, it's becoming more... Um, I mean, there are Chinese Muslims, obviously, like of Ch of black there um, from Muslim backgrounds, but there's becoming more like in the Asian, um, East Asian um, culture yes. now that the people are becoming Muslims, like, you know. It's yes, alhamdulillah. Like Imagine what he must have thought, like, I'm a Muslim, she's definitely a Muslim. Yeah. What was she thinking to shaking my hand? And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Subhanallah, it's amazing, isn't it? But it, it, it is. It's show like it's it's like Islam. All the time, we we should always try to. Um, we just always have to put Islam first at the end of the day, and before anything else, you know. It's, yes, it's a lesson for us. Yeah, yes, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. I'm always being the best of people, no, regardless Definitely. of how they look or absolutely just being the best of people. Yes, Wallahi, because there's been times when there's been many non-Muslims here as a single parent. I've been helped so many times by non-Muslims, and a lot of time it's been non-Muslim men, you know. And I yes. just, you know. And without they, you know, without feeling judged or anything, like I've needed help, and they've just been so kind to me. They've not treated me in any way, like you know, bad or anything, you know, subhanallah. So it's like it just reminds me that Allah's help can come in any form. You know? Absolutely, so we, we should always we we always have to be respectful and thinking well of Allah and thinking well of the people as well. Don't think negatively. Yeah, and I found that to be honest, I've had very few bad experiences with people, you know. So alhamdulillah. No, I, I agree with you, same with me, and, and I think once you open your heart and you try, even in negative situation, you try to find something best, you know, because negativity builds negativity. It does, it's, it's, it does. Uh, you, so, yeah, the, the situations do occur, and not, it's not easy to reply. Uh, I remember even my parents, they, I think every revert will get to the point where there will be a breaking point with the parents. Mm. As first they accepted me and then there was this one big conversation when you know why do you choose this islam why do you do this why do you do that uh, i think and um yeah it's a having a patience and remember that they are not guided and obviously allah sent me a friend allah sent me a friend who sent me a message at the most needed time to remind me that and uh, it, it sort of it, because it could have gone the wrong way if I would have gone from anger to anger say okay mm -hmm. you know what that's me and I'll deal with it it wouldn't have gone the right way so it's having the like you say as well um, positive attitude regardless to anyone niqabi, hijabi, muslim, non-muslim we live in dunya with so much pain everywhere exactly. so much everyone is having I, I, I remember the days when I used to sit with sisters and we had little problems compared to now. Now everyone is suffering. Every single sister, brother having some sort of trials, tribulations, alhamdulillah. I think, you know, it's, it's, no, it's no place for anger. There's no place for, it shouldn't be a place. For, it shouldn't be. 
Yeah, definitely. And, and we just need to have um, more compassion for people yeah. and more respect. I think yeah. these, these these things is important, subhanAllah, because we're not going to love everybody. Like, this is like, you know, I'm not saying, yeah, we just love everyone because you, you, I don't think that's normal, to be honest with you mm -hmm. personally. But if you have compassion towards people, you you kind of see the humanity in the person and you connect with that. And you respect well, them. You know, we should, as a Muslim, we should remember the Prophet wasallam entered the city and he was stoned uh, to the to the point that his shoes were filled with blood. And as oh, upset as he was, he asked Allah. Allah offered him to, um, you know, to punish the people exactly. who punish the city. And he chose he chose the goodness for them. Mm -hmm. So yes, obviously we all have a limit. We're all humans. We don't have. Uh, level of the man as our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but uh, stories like that it should remind us that they not they doing it for whatever the reasons they're doing it as much as long as we safe and we secure we should not reply to from to anger yeah. with anger yeah that's it subhanallah subhanallah so it's a really big lesson that subhanallah yes yes so um, on that note, would you say that you feel that the niqab is a barrier? I know we've kind of discussed this a little bit, but what, what's your personal view? And if so, in which sense as well? I think niqab is not a barrier. I think niqab is a very personal choice. I would say niqab, I don't, maybe I'm, I'm wrong in here, but I do not want to attribute, attribute niqab to religion as so much as a clothing, mm -hmm. a clothing sort of to... Maybe I know personally that it's obviously based on religion, but when I live in non-Islamic country or when I travel to non-Islamic country, I want to see it as a, just a personal clothing. And uh, at times I choose to not to wear it if I, if I go to specific cities or countries and due to just the um, understanding of other sides, trying to understand uh, the other people who don't have the knowledge that I do. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, if there's a people, I see people uncomfortable with my niqab, let's say security or you have to go to school or some special important meetings. Like I had the interview meeting and uh, for uh, my upcoming job. Mm -hmm. One of my sisters uh, joked, she said, well, I hope you're not going to wear niqab in the interview. I said, no, I'm going to wear niqab and the cross upside down. Come on. Like, seriously, like who does that? You know, we just need to see it. Uh, understanding the other side, I said, mm -hmm. yeah, of course I'm not going to wear it because I have to understand the, the people who are not used to it. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. So I think it's, a, it's, it's not a barrier, but it's, um, it's a cloth of education for both sides. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think if, we, if they will understand that uh, they don't, if non Muslims will try to understand us and we will try to understand them. I think we should be okay. Yeah, inshallah, definitely. We have a hope as a humanity. So did you, have you traveled since COVID at all? I have. I have traveled um, to my uh, back home, but I wasn't wearing a cup. Mm -hmm. When I go to the, uh, I, I was traveling a few weeks to the um, Sere, meeting people who are majority uh, um, uh, non-Muslims, and, and I chose to take off niqab. I wore my hijab because I just knew how that might just be a little bit uncomfortable for people mm -hmm. and let them see me as me first and then I can wear niqab and I think it's the clothing that we should, as a Muslim should too see how we wear. Yeah, Sister, okay. there's a lot of niqabis that um, wear niqab but inside their behavior does not show that they're Muslims at all. Oh, no, no. So it's, you know, we need to, that's my, again, personal view that we need to see a clothing uh, as a clothing and a behavior for more than anything else. These are sisters who wear niqab and would not even salam each other. SubhanAllah. Yeah, I know. I've seen things like that. And I think it's, it's really bad. And uh, to be honest, yeah. it's, not, it's not just um, sisters who wear the niqab. I, I find that happens with even sisters who wear hijab. Hijab, niqab, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, just, yeah. Um, and sometimes it's, it comes like it's like because people see like Islam as culture again I think a lot of the time that's been in my experience at least like people see me and because they don't identify me as being part of their culture they don't give me salam or they don't or they know they don't yeah. know 
personally so they won't respond to my salam you know and to point yes. like, I remember like going to one of my friend's house her, um, to visit her mum um and they they're Asian and um I was sitting wearing my niqab and a, a sister came in and she asked me if I was Muslim you know I, I've said salam alaikum to her and everything but and you know she didn't respond to me and then she asked me if I was Muslim and I just I just found that quite strange it's like because she and did you notice that her sisters that wore niqabs they considered to be a higher in a man mm. yeah we've Have discussed this that, so many like... times subhanallah and, it's, and this is one of the things actually like it's, it's nice that you've kind of brought this up because I mean even for you personally as well you've chosen to wear the niqab and I remember you mentioned earlier in the conversation that you was thinking it's something for when you become more knowledgeable and these kind of different things but I agree with you I think it's something that we should see as part of our hijab even if yeah. we don't feel that we're so knowledgeable because we need to get used to wearing the hijab because the hijab is something which is obligatory it's an obligation to us by Allah so even if we just embrace the niqab as part of that um it, instead of attaching it to a level of righteousness you know it's like almost showing like because then you're 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 attributing like some kind of superiority to a piece of cloth which we shouldn't Absolutely. Do that, that is the opposite of what we want because we cannot think of ourselves as being superior because we wear the niqab or the hijab you know we shouldn't be like that because Allah is the one you know, who's going to judge us like who is who is good and who isn't you know when I uh, first time I wore hijab my son was about five years old mm -hmm. and I asked him I said uh, baby no do you like how mommy looks and he said yes mommy I said oh really he said yes mommy you're not so angry when you wear hijab subhanallah and it really like it's, it will stay with me in, for the rest of my life, and and I think that's the biggest lesson that we can take off. That yes, like you, like we talked about that. Uh, even I thought that all niqab is means that you on a higher level of iman. You know, you you you. No, because uh, hijab and niqab it's not about the it's a, it's a piece of clothing. It's your personality where you wear underneath mm. should shine more than what you wear on top. Of course, subhanallah. Allah. it's true it really is true and I think that's I think that you know a lot of us you know who've chosen to you know wear the niqab especially like that's how we feel like we feel that we need to make more effort like you said to be more friendly and to be more approachable to people and show that we're not doing it to it's not about anybody else it's about us we're trying to make ourselves better as Muslims you know this is what it is you know, trying to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we're trying to, that's why we wear the niqab, part of the reason why we wear it. You know, it's not. I um, think even, yeah, like uh, being a better, and sometimes, like, you know, we talked, it's not always easy to be the better person, mm -hmm. but at least have more understanding that when we see the looks, when we see that somebody might just pass and say some, like, I, I heard that you pass and somebody says, or oh, terrorist, you know, um, not to react. Yeah, subhanAllah. Sort of, you know, have have met better understanding of sort of, you know, okay, swallow the pill because you're gonna be rewarded for exactly. swallowing that pill. Exactly. And you know, and, and, and sort of, you know, understand that um maybe us reverts like yourself and me, um, we understand that we've been on another side. Mm -hmm. That exactly. it's not always that easy to understand. So maybe, you know, swallowing that pill, walking away from the situation, having that sabr will be a much better. And, and regardless, yeah, yeah. you know, than, than imagine a niqab in the middle of the road arguing with another person. I mean, that's just, yeah. <laughs> it's a piece of clothing, but gives you, uh, gives you rights and gives you a conduct that yes. you need to follow as well mm -hmm, definitely because we're representing the religion that's we can't get away with, from that basically because when when we oh, yes. anytime we leave the house with our hijabs people identify us as muslims so whatever we do as muslims people will attach you to islam even if you know that might be unfair to some extent but that's what's happening so we have to be more conscious of how we behave and what we do very true very very true and may allah I can only ask Allah to give the sabr to all Muslim sisters yeah. or brothers too who, you know, who uh, uh, struggling with uh, with the racism or with the attacks and, and on daily basis. And yes, we probably because you and myself never had the really worst of the side of it. Yes. Yeah, so you know, we can talk like that, but there will always going to be a sisters who felt 
much worse than us. Of course. And obviously their point of view will be completely different. Yes. So may Allah bring us all together, Muslim and non-Muslim, just on a general respect level. Yeah, definitely, subhanAllah. Yeah, because, you know, I, I know some sisters who have been attacked for wearing the, the hijab or even the qab as well. And, you know, Subhan even Allah. trying to get them to open up and talk about it is something they're quite reluctant to do, you know, to share these experiences. And, um, you know, for this platform particularly, because, you know, I like to get a broad view from different women like their personal experiences it's not i'm not trying to paint a pretty picture about what wearing the niqab is i want people just to tell their experiences you know however they were whether it was good or bad so sometimes when i ask those sisters who have negative experiences they say oh but you know like i don't want to share my experience because it's not positive and and i say well it's still your experience oh, bless. Yes. share it because people need to know you know the the good and the not so good you know because yes it's not that you know we don't want to make this kind of seem that oh yeah niqab is the easiest thing to do in the world and that why that so therefore why aren't you just wearing it you know that people have been through hardships because of it so we, yeah. we see both sides as, as a balance but at the end of the day like you said the reward is with allah you know whatever we yeah. do and we swallow that pill basically like when people make any kind of bad comments towards us and things like that we should just say alhamdulillah just say alhamdulillah i mean i think even regardless you know what even for, even if you get let's say abused because of niqab it's a still a test of allah of course you know i, I can get tested uh, uh, you know through my help mm -hmm. uh, others can get tested through financial difficulties or actually a blessing some consider a blessing financial blessing that's a test as well and other people get tested because of the uh, appearances uh, religious appearances it's still a test of allah exactly i mean may allah make it easy and and everyone will all get tested now beautiful perfect ways and you know it's just a, it's a, yeah duas we can uh, that's all i think we can do Spread the knowledge, spread the, like your platform, subhanAllah, may Allah reward you so much for it because yeah, 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 I've heard yeah, yeah. so many stories, I've, re I've, I've listened to your page and, and it's just, a, it shows that we are connected and yet disconnected, have our own, no, connected and have so many different, our own stories mm -hmm. and connect us together, the good and bad. Alhamdulillah. That's the most beautiful thing, subhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. So, um, have you met any sisters who would, who like yourself, would like to wear the niqab, for example? Because you, obviously you've had your own journey towards it. But do you know any other um, sisters who might be reverts or even not reverts, but they they really want to wear the niqab and they're not allowed to wear it for any particular reason, or they, you know, they they just feel not confident to wear it? I had one. I I, I personally no, I cannot say that I. Uh, know any sisters that would be forbidden from wearing it from the families or the, any other reasons i just had one sister that because of she she uh, she's my friend she laughed at me she said oh so now you you nikabi now i said yeah you know corona come on we have to do things and now <laughs> she becomes nikabi she's nikabi she and she looks and when she saw herself, how she looks, and she the respect, she said, "Okay, I get it." Mashallah. Now she's the Kabi too. Alhamdulillah. So I think, yeah, you know, it's it's a that's my uh, story. That's my friends. No, I haven't had anyone who would be. Um, I know you interviewed one sister, um, who sells niqabs. Um, oh, so sister, um, sister Asia. Yes, Sister Asia, yes. And uh, she's, bless her, she's Polish as well. And yeah, we talked with as well about our experiences. And her niqab, uh, you know, is the most beautiful ones. And, you know, I, I, I buy from her and I say all the sisters that, you know, the cloth you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the my friends, the experience first, she said, oh, yeah, that's nice. So, you know, and alhamdulillah, I think we, we're queens. We can wear niqab as our almost beautifying ourselves may Allah forgive us I'm not saying outside but you know it's it's like I just see there's a beauty and yes. when you know you share that with sisters who try it and let me try it okay what it is you know with the sort of <laughs> alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. it's beautiful alhamdulillah alhamdulillah it's amazing so what would you advise to um sisters who do want to wear the niqab but they they don't feel confident to wear it? what kind of advice would you give them take one day at a time one day at a time with everything. You want to wear a niqab? 
put one on, see at home where, choose the color. I say, you know what, in living in this country, try different colors. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there will be some sisters who will disagree with that. And um, that's like I said, may Allah forgive me if I'm wrong, but that's my opinion. Try different colors. Try what suits you. There's a different styles now, alhamdulillah. You know, don't try it alone. Try it with sisters, get together, have any car parties, you know. Mashallah. See, you know, so many car things parties, like I haven't heard of that. That sounds great. <laughs> no, you know, when you try different, then we can always exchange the cards and see, oh, I don't oh. know, obviously now, but, uh, you know, and for the sisters who, who are new and, and see how we come out and go to husbands and, you know, show... Look how well that's what I did. I was like, what do you really? think of that? No, that's do you know what that sounds so nice. I mean, maybe when this COVID stuff is over, like this is something sisters sisters could actually do, have a having their carb parties, like sisters who yeah. sell carbs and come together and you just try different yeah, carbs. Really nice. Have, yeah, different have colors, some snacks. <laughs> yeah. And especially you know if you make us some difficult more difficult dishes to eat with the niqab. You know, when mm -hmm. you have to like the sauces and everything. Yeah. It's just fun, you know, especially to, well, us practicing already in the cab is to have a laugh at the new sisters, like, how are they going to eat the food with the Allah, No, that sounds like a lot of fun, you know. That sounds like a yeah. really nice idea. But that, that, obviously, you have to have to practice with with the old niqab, not a new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding, man. So there's a different, try to, yeah, try to see niqab from a nice point of view, not a fart, not a something in compulsory, not something that is, you know, just have fun with it, play with it. Yeah, and it becomes you. I think it really, mashallah, becomes you if it's your kind of thing. Alhamdulillah. I think it's nice that, I mean, your husband, it seems that he does support you with the wearing the niqab as well, right? Yeah. No, he didn't at first. I'm not going to say. He, she said to me one of the first times after two times I tried, he said, Lena, no, which is he never said no to me mm -hmm. about anything else religiously. But he said um, it just wasn't his, in his culture, it's not very, um, people, so women don't wear niqab so much in his culture. Mm -hmm. So he was something like, no. And the funniest thing is when I used to wear niqab, subhanAllah, sister, he couldn't look into my eyes. He would look at me and he would lower his gaze. SubhanAllah. And I used to laugh. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then obviously slowly, again, for him, he was just getting used to it. Now he's more than happy. He walks proudly with me. Alhamdulillah. Come to so, yeah. it's, it's, it's nice. It's like a, it's like a, it was. I suppose it's kind of bit. Of, it's been a bit of a learning curve for him then as well, yes. maybe. Yes. Yes. It's, I think it's for everyone should be. I think when if you put the niqab as you must, and you put it there, it just makes it so much harder, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's it's just uh, yeah. Alhamdulillah. So um, finally, to end the interview, sister, I'll ask you, what does the niqab mean to you? Freedom. Mashallah. It means freedom to me, freedom from uh, all of the Western society um, rules, how you have to look, what, what you have to wear, a certain, you know, the makeups. And now look, we see now every day the things that sisters uh, look one way in the morning, different way. Not sisters, I'm sorry, women. Mm -hmm. Women look one way in the morning and then without the makeup, different way in the evening. Niqab takes yeah. that all away. Yeah, I think niqab is a freedom. You're free to to be to to be accepted for your personality rather than your looks. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How do you feel as, as being a being a mother as well? Like you you mentioned that your son says that you seem less angry when you wear the hijab. But what about when you started wearing the niqab? What was the what was your children's reaction? Um, my my son was very happy. My son was sort of now he's a big boy. He's like, yeah, mom, you look nice. Yeah. Uh, my daughter, however, when I come to pick her up from um, school, because she's in year one, I hear, mm -hmm. I see her friends, her best friends come to me to her and, why is your mommy wearing that? So there's a sort of, uh, obviously, again, uh, I have to speak to my daughter and say, you know, uh, mommy's wearing it because we are Muslims. So mm -hmm. now she turns around, she's like, well, we're Muslims, right? Yeah. Now she gives dawah to her friends, like, come on, stop eating, we're fasting, right? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So, uh, I see, I see they use, it was like, you know, my children, okay, but they see the questions. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah, I think now, one time somebody asked, second time, now they're all well and happy. And uh, again, doesn't help to be the only niqab in the school. <laughs> so, sort of, everyone knows 
whose mother you are. Yeah, alhamdulillah. But you that's know, what, what, I, what, what, I find interesting, and... what I found interesting about that is because you mentioned that you started wearing the niqab like when COVID's happened and everybody's wearing masks anyway. So what I find interesting is that people are still do make a clear distinction between the niqab and the um, and face masks because something that um, obviously a lot of sisters have found it easier to wear the niqab because of COVID. And um, some people, like last year, the question was being asked, isn't the niqab just another type of mask? And I suppose it is in a way, but a distinction is still there, isn't it? Yeah, that, that really surprises me. You would think that, um, you know, you would think we should get more accepted mm -hmm. because of all the masks. But, I mean, there is some degree of, um, uh, I think there is some degree of understanding when people can smile through the masks and you sort of other people understand now. <laughs> but, but I don't think, I think it's still a, a still to do with the religion and to do with the colors. Mm -hmm. I say to all sisters, you know, if you want to integrate more, wear different colors, wear bright colors. Yeah, definitely. I think I, th I, d I can agree with that as well. I think I love I love black myself in general, but I notice like oh, yes, I know, I do, yes, I do, with my yeah. mom, like, which is something my mom's always kind of like pointed out, like anytime I wear black, you know, she'll always, you know, make a thing of it. And like my daughter doesn't wear niqab, but she my daughter likes to wear black quite a lot or like, you know, really dark um, blue, you know, navy blues and stuff. And my mom will be like, oh, but you're so young. Why don't you wear like, you know, brighter colors and my daughter just doesn't like wearing bright colors like you know she's she just doesn't so and um even like some of my friends have said like you know even if she's wearing a black abaya or something get her to wear like a lighter color scarf because she's fair skinned as well so like it just doesn't when you wear black against white skin sometimes it kind of flushes your you know complexion a little bit so if you wear like something with a little bit of color it can just kind of you know make you look a bit yeah warm. i agree my favorite mm -hmm. niqabs are, are the black ones and it really like makes you look super nice so yeah. sometimes I, even that i have to remind myself like okay are you showing off that's my you know <laughs> to, that's my opinion towards myself and um but yeah again depending where you go what you do if you go to school every day okay first few times it could be you know whatever the colors you wear will be attractive to other people that you are different so but then people get used to it alhamdulillah mm -hmm. uh, but depending on where you are if you like again if you go to less dominant muslim places um try colors try gray try you know light so mm -hmm. um it just looks like you in my personal opinion that you more acceptable to non-muslims yeah it, i think it just breaks the stereotype a little bit yes. because yes. what they see when when they when the niqab is portrayed as being you know i don't know barbaric or i don't know like what kind of terms they even use you know as being extreme and stuff it's like yeah. they, they use they like to use the color black you know this is the kind of stereotypical um color that they use even though like it's funny because when they mention burqa which the burqa is the it's like the traditional Afghan um, dress. Yeah, they dyed blue, that, isn't it? That's a, that's a blue color, I, uh, you know, and still like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of strange, like, subhanAllah. So yeah, you know, that's yeah. a really beautiful blue color, but they don't, I don't know. Like, yes. Obviously, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're not doing things to please the non-Muslim specifically, but you can, as I said, it's just having that kind of flexibility as well. There's a flexibility there. You don't have to wear black. Yes. So, you know, if if it makes makes people feel a little bit maybe more at ease, then inshallah khair. Yeah, inshallah khair. Yes, alhamdulillah. You know, it's it's in the end of the days. Everything is a test on everyday basis. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. It's every day, every situation is different. Every situation needs a different approach and and loads of du'as. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Lots of, always du'a, always du'a. Yeah, because only du'a can change the kadr. Exactly, and we are doing we are doing the work, so alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, sister. Thank you so much thank for you, joining you. me today, and, and I've really enjoyed our conversation, alhamdulillah, as always. It's I nice really to do too. talk to Jazakallah, have a good with you. Thank you for having me, and may Allah reward you for everything that you do. I mean, why, Yaki, sister? Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.